All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go and take a look at this real quick. Um, if I have 2 sine squared of 2x equals 1, the main important thing, like I said, is solving for the sine. So when solving for the sine, we're just going to divide by 2. And therefore, we get now sine squared of 2x is equal to 1 half. Now, we have to make sure we get sine, right? We're evaluating for the sine, so we're going to square root. And therefore, we get sine of 2x is equal to plus or minus, plus or minus um, the square root of 1 half. Well, remember, the square root of 1 half is equal to the square root of 1 over the square root of 2, which is equal to 1 over the square root of 2, which now I rationalize my denominator, and I get the square root of 2 over 2. All right. Hopefully, you guys get a little practice with your square roots of rational numbers, and you get something like that. So therefore, I just have the sine of 2x equals square root of 2 over 2. Now, there is no constraint on my interval. So I am going to have to just find, let's, I'm sorry, plus or minus. So now I just need to determine you know, what are my intervals for my answer. So we go and look at our lovely unit circle. All right. Now, in this example, you guys can see we have plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. So when is sine, uh, let's say when, for what angle, even though it's 2x, the sine of what angle is equal to when the sine is equal to a positive square root of 2 over 2? Well, positive square root of 2 over 2 is this angle and this angle. Right? Negative square root of 2 is this angle and that angle. So what we notice is we can say that 2x, or whatever this angle, is equal to this first angle, which is pi over 4. Now, plus, if I, again, if I see there's another angle right here, that's another solution, right? So again, I just need to add pi to it n times. And then I can say my other solution is going to be um, at pi over 4, so I could say 2x equals um, 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. Now, you're just looking at your different, it all depends on what the problem that you're looking at, or your different answers. So in this, in this problem, the thing was you didn't have the, the plus or minus on your problem. OK? And that was the difference with your problem and what I'm doing. Um, look it up here. <coughs> so and actually, in um, reality, if we actually look at this, um, you guys can actually see this is, again, repeating our answers, right? If you go to here, and then you go to here, really, all I need to add over to my next one is just pi over 4, right? So I'm really just kind of repeating my answer. So rather than just adding pi, if I just add pi force n times, I'm going to get the exact same answer, right? Because to go here, if I add pi force, I get to the next answer. Add pi force again, um, I'm sorry, pi halves, not pi force. Sorry. From here to here is pi halves. 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 I'm just add, adding pi halves, right? And you can keep on doing this infinite many times. That's why we multiply by n. Now we need to solve for x. So you divide by 2. Therefore, x equals pi over 8 plus pi over 4. And that would be your final solution.